It's the final big push before the Christmas holidays and Daryl and Jesse have been working really hard on restoring the suspension units. Now it's time to get them all assembled. Hi, I'm Kurt from Oz Armour and welcome to Workshop Wednesday. Before we get started, we thought we would share with you some of the differences between the Grand and Sherman suspension components. There's been a few people that have sent emails and asked questions, so we thought we'd just show a few differences because we didn't know about them either. So it's really interesting to find these different variations. What we have here is a Grand spring. They're the same height, but this is a 7 inch spring or about 175 mil versus a 8 inch spring, 200 millimetres. And when you, we didn't know them because when they're in the units, you can't really tell the difference in size, but when you pull them apart, it's obvious. The other thing is too, that this, this is also Grant. This is where the, you can see one spring is still attached. The two springs either side, as this is upside down, of course, with the rocker arms here. There's a different shape here. See, this one's got a lot more strengthening. So this is the later model one. So whether or not they had production issues or they found out that during heavy use that they cracked, so they've strengthened them up like this. It causes a bit of trouble, but we thought they were interchangeable, but once again, they're not. So what we have here, this is the one that came off our Stuart bogies. And the reason we took it off is you can see the damage that's been done to it by a broken wheel. So it's actually got a twist in it as well. So there's no way we could use that. So it had to come off anyway. Imagine the force to do that. Oh, yeah, it's scary when you think about it. So completely unusable, what a shame. Completely unusable, yeah. Look at the damage on that side there. Just, just torn into it. Okay, so that's a Sherman one. That's a Sherman one, and then when I put a Grant one on top, you can see the difference of the angles. If you match the pivot points up, oh, you can no. see the difference. Yeah, it absolutely wouldn't work. No, so I'm not sure if that's because they use these different housings and where they put the gussets on it, they built it up more and, and lowered the, the point between the pivot point and the base of it. The distance between the top of here and the top here, whether that equals the amount that they've lowered them. Whether, because they added this extra gusseting, whether that's the reason they've changed the swing arms. Well, what we're calling the swing arms, pivot arms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we ju we're just not, not sure. We so. just don't know. As, but, long as, but, as long as we put them back together and they work, <laughs> we're happy. This is the first one I pulled apart and Jess has pulled apart, so yeah, it's all a learning experience. Yeah. Crazy. Expect the unexpected. After refitting the bogey housings, it was time to get some paint on the components and lower hull. Now for the reassembly. Oh, can you turn the air on, please? <laughs> Oh yeah, chuck it there. I'll, I'll assemble that. We'll chuck that in. Oh, that is that is nice. Perfect. Perfect. 
up in here. Good, that went on that sharp. Yeah, I can put the other one on from here if you want, Chris. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You got him? Yep. Is this how they would have done it? Oh, they would have had a jig that would have held it all in place. Yeah, probably. something purpose built. It's like a plate that comes up with a bar and then it's got a counterweight on the outside. And they would have probably used a gantry. And it would have just held it in place, they would have swung it in, bang, like they, they did them so quick. They would there's, have, yeah. there's footage on YouTube that you can watch of um, them building these in the factory. And you see when they put the track on, like the track's really extremely heavy. And there's like two guys just pick it up and just pull it on like it's nothing. What? They just put a bar in, just one of them grabs it and they just pull it along. <laughs> and then one, one guy's waiting there to catch it. And then they join the pin in in like a matter of like 30 seconds. Practice makes perfect. Yeah, like it's just incredible the, the stuff that they did in the factory. Girls. Alright Jess, I just got to guide these springs in. Yep. Just go up a bit more. Go up slow. the spring as much as possible. If you look at the spring you can see it still needs to compress a bit. So we just do a little bit each side just so we keep the spring. You can see this rocker arm set moves either side if you go too much one way. Alright. Go a little bit more. Just a little bit of center. Let's get now. We'll just go a little bit more. Yeah, I'll go a little bit center. Is that high enough? So we can get the pins in? Yeah, that should be good. Look at that. Look at it move so freely. Oh yeah, baby. That. Man. Free man. You guys have bloody... Come worked, on and free man. Worked some serious magic. That was two days of wild wheeling. Oh, two days of wild wheeling. Yeah. <laughs> it's lucky days. there's any material left. Yeah, on. and two and days... Loop. Oh, and lube, and yeah. a lot of honing, a lot of honing, yeah. 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 You oh, actually wow. see how firm of a fit. Yeah. They are, if you come in there and have a look through the side here. Like we had all the original swing arms and that, the pins we could reuse. We pretty much reused everything. The only thing that we've had to remanufacture is we've got to make two of these. Everything else is original. Just cleaned it all up. Spent a few days like, pulling it all apart, honing everything out, and getting it all back together. And everything works perfect now. So 
like even the pins. A few of these pins were a bit worrying, but but they they work out all right. They work out fine. True. Yeah, I, I know. Fine. I know one of them was pretty bent. Well, uh, one of them. That, yeah, we didn't use that one. We had some spare ones. We had some spare sets. That's lucky. Our spacer tube or a crush tube first. It goes onto a locating uh, bit here. So that just pushes on like that. You bring it in and locate that on there too. We've got to line these up later on. So Daryl's just put these marks on so we just know where we are kind uh, of. Okay, so because we're gonna... part of the problem was that where like these grooves are. Yeah, well that's where the bolts go through. And, and they were wedged, weren't that, they? That's exactly it. Yeah, and yeah, it, okay. when we put these in, they need to be lined up perfect so the bolts will actually feed in because that's what kind of stops it from rocking back and forth. So. Yeah. Just behind you, rubber mallet on that on that housing. Just turn around one more. Yeah, that's top there. Yeah. Are you aware of it? Yeah. Wear washers that go in between, they're, they're a wear washer. Do they come out on the full moon? Yeah. Yeah, and it holds it all in position. down here, just turn him off and hop down here. I've got the back one on, but it looks like it needs to, it's hard to see, but it looks like the body at the back needs to come to me, like this arm to me. Don't put anything in there you don't want to lose. Do you? Yeah, side shift to me a fraction. Yep. On them, see the little tabs that are still on them? Oh wow, yeah. Got the tabs on them? on the top of those uh Yes, I think you can go out. The beetle on his back. Can you do those back two? Make them up, just bring up the pressure onto it so they're all pressure on the other side. Take it 
Yeah. I think we're pumping it up. Oh. Oh. Alright. Oh. Yep, go. They're loose now. So. Oh. One aspect of the suspension units we haven't seen a lot of has been the return rollers. Now Daryl will take us through how they all go together. Sweaty, hot. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit warm today, so 35, so nice and tropical. So what do we have here then, Daryl? Right, we've, we've cleaned all these, uh, what, what we call track return rollers. So these are on the top of the bogies and support the track as it goes around. So they just basically take the weight. So a lot of them were seized and a couple of big flat spots on them. So we've, uh, we've repaired some and we've got other ones off uh, a donor vehicle up the farm. So I'm just going to put new bearings in. Got the bearings here, I've greased them up. Ready to go. So I'm just going to drop a little bit of oil in here just to assist them to go in. Anything kind of peculiar to these or unique? Oh, not really. They're just... Uh, just pretty basic. They're, they're the same model used over and over. The bogies have changed shapes and designs. That's right, because the early ones were, were directly over the top. Yeah, and, but yeah, and these ones are off to the side. So these are what we call the Sherman ones, the later later running ones. So gotcha. So bearings that we we sourced for this because that's a fairly tight fit. But we don't have any bar that that's that side. We need something about four inches. Press and just press them down. Oh, you press that one in? Yeah, we'll, we'll, pre we'll press them in because I think it's it's just getting a bit firm. So even though I've sanded them and give them a, a bit of a touch up, I think we just press them in square would be better. <laughs> First bearings in, we've just you've just seen it go pressed on the press. You'll see it. Yep. Now always make sure you put the spacer in. Okay. That's important. It's an important part. Is it around the right way? It's around the right way. Yep. <laughs> There's no around the right way on this one. Yeah. Okay. So one way fits all. Right, looking good. Got the other bearing here ready to go. Yep. I've already got put a bit of oil in here, so on, on she goes. There we go. Alright, we'll just head back to the press now and press that in. There we go. How's she look? Looking good. We've got our shaft here, we've got our oil seal. So what we'll probably do is just pop the oil seal into here and then we'll put it onto the shaft there.
So what we have here is a locking collar, a uh, oil grease seal, locking collar, then a locking nut. So we've got to put these in. I'll just grease these up first, put a bit of oil on them. So what's this? Uh, a couple of little tools we made up. Just show us how they go in. Oh, it's just got two, two pins there. So we just made up about a bit of thing. Got a locking ring that goes on top. Just be careful that you don't cross thread them. If you go through the parts manuals, they've got used tool drawing WC1. Yeah, yeah. We don't have all those tools, so you've got to have a look around and see what you can. Use and make up. Gotta get creative here at Oz Armour. That's it. <laughs> I'm tighten that up in a second, but I'll just show you these little grease nipple holes. They've got a little pressure relief valve for the grease nipple. So you've got a standard grease nipple one side, and then a the little pressure relief valve. You can see that when there's too much grease, that pops out. And you can see that it's over greased. Can you see that? Ah, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's spring loaded. Yeah. So, first time I've seen them. So, so that the one each side, one on that side, and a grease nipple on that side. It will let you know when it's over greased, when it's full of grease. Yeah. That's the best we can work out with them. So. Don't they have them on excavators and stuff like that? I've not, well, I've I've done a lot of work on excavators, but that's the only time I've seen a, a uh, relief valve type thing for the grease nipple. And that's on the road wheels as well, so. Yeah, nice. Oh, oh getting these tiny things in. Yeah. Oh, you did it easy. Ah, uh, luck of the draw. Every now and then it works. Here we go, I've jinxed it now. Oh, you can come again, Kurt. No, beautiful. I always jinx the other workshop. Now what we'll do is we'll, we'll wait until everything's on and we'll grease it all in one hit so we don't miss anything. We'll start from one end and work our way through and, and all the grease nipples. We're not oh, driving once, it once anywhere. Once all the rollers are assembled. Yeah, once all the rollers are assembled, we'll go through because we'll, we'll have to get a, you know, pump up grease gun and just, you know, it's gonna, gonna take a bit to get it all going. Daryl and Jesse have done an amazing job so far, but the real test will be taking the grant off its stands and having it rest on these suspension units on its own. That's all we have time for today. Be sure to tune in next Wednesday for your weekly tank restoration fix. So until then, on behalf of everyone here at the Australian Armour and Artillery Museum, we wish you a very, very Merry Christmas, and we'll see you on the next one.